All right, grade 11s, well, welcome to the very last lesson of this first unit on kinematics, okay? Um, yeah, well, we'll see how you like this one. This one is, is kind of completely different from everything else that we've uh, been doing so far, but it does like go back to sort of the motion equations and a little bit of what we've been talking about, about vector components, okay? So today we're gonna talk about projectile motion. And um, if you've ever thrown a ball in the air, and of course you have, because I mean, who hasn't? Everyone has thrown a ball, of course, at some point in their time or thrown a rock or whatever it is. Um, yeah, anything, anytime you throw an object and it's solely under the influence of gravity after you throw it, we consider that a projectile. An airplane doesn't count, or a bird, they're not projectiles. The reason why is because they have means of propulsion. Right, like a rocket, it's not really a projectile. Um, a bullet from a gun, I know it's sort of a violent example, but yeah, that would be a projectile. An arrow from a bow would be a projectile. A football is a projectile, a soccer ball, right? Um, yeah, so a baseball, you know, like, so these are the examples that, that we're talking about for projectile motion. So, you know, throwing something around, a snowball would be a projectile, right? Snow outside. So these are projectiles. Now here I have on the screen, you can see like a little demonstration of projectile motion. And the key to understanding projectiles is this, like, you know, there are two components to its motion. There's a vertical part and a horizontal part. And just to show you what I mean, I'm gonna make this cannon launch a ball straight up in the air. Now we already know what's gonna happen, okay? So if I launch it straight up in the air, it just goes up, right? And then comes back down again. And here you can see the green line represents its velocity. Okay, so that's what happens when you throw a ball straight up in the air. It, gravity will slow it down on the way up, okay? And here, let me do it again. Gravity slows it down on the way up and then it speeds up on the way back down. In fact, I'm gonna put in slow motion for you and we'll do it one last time. So here it's going up, slowing down as it rises till it reaches the apex of its motion. Then it speeds up on the way down. And the acceleration is uniform, 9.8 meters per second squared down all the time. Now we've done this before when you, we've thrown objects up in the before in questions or drop them like the drop and throw question. It's very similar. So in a way we've already done projectile motions that are in one dimension, just up and down. But something interesting happens when you tilt the cannonball and launch it at an angle. So not the ball, but the launcher. Now I'm gonna launch it again. Here you can see two vectors now, one representing its horizontal velocity and another one representing its vertical velocity. And you know, it goes up and comes back down, okay? And uh, you can see that it also reaches an apex. So again, it's accelerating downwards, but this time not straight down, okay? So the acceleration is actually straight down all the time, but what's happening now as it moves up and down is it's also moving sideways. It's moving horizontally at the same time, okay? So we can try different angles and we'll notice that as the object, you know, does what it always does, it goes up and comes back down, it's moving horizontally at the same time, okay? And so the deal with projectile motions, to get your head around the questions, all you have to do is break it into two parts. There's a vertical part where it just goes up and down, but there's also a horizontal part and horizontally, it's just moving at a constant velocity here. Let me show you again. This time when you're watching the projectile go, pay careful attention to the velocity vectors. It'll show you a horizontal, okay, and a vertical velocity vector. So I'm gonna pause it this time. So here, I take the shot, I'll pause it. Now right here, you can see there's a green upward vector. That's its upward velocity at this moment in time. And it has a green horizontal vector that's you know pointing towards, like it's just sort of a horizontal line pointing towards the, uh, the right of the screen. Okay, that's its horizontal velocity. So it has two velocities, a vertical a velocity and a horizontal velocity. And what happens to the vertical one is that changes over time, but the horizontal one stays the same all the time. Okay, so it stays the same 
while the vertical one is decreasing because of gravity, right? So here at the very apex, right there at that spot, the vertical velocity is actually zero for an instant, but the horizontal velocity is not zero. The horizontal velocity is still there. In fact, it never changes the entire, the, throughout the entire path of the projectile. So watch, we'll let it go. See, now the horizontal or the vertical velocity has become negative. So it's on its way back down. And the, uh, the horizontal velocity is still constant. And now it's going to increase its vertical velocity on the way back down. And let's see if we can get one more glimpse out of here. Here, it's just about to hit. We can see that the vertical velocity is almost at a maximum value. Okay, that's, it's gonna be on the impact to the ground soon. And the horizontal velocity has not changed once this entire time. It has stayed the same the entire time. So that's really the key to it. Now, before we move over and look at some notes on this, and I did post like a note explaining everything. Okay, let me clear this. And uh, I wanna show you, instead of showing you the velocity vector, let's look at the acceleration vector. And let's just get rid of that, okay, here. So let's play it again, this time looking at the acceleration vector. Whoops, okay, so here I'm gonna launch it. All right, so if you look at the acceleration vector, it's the yellow vector that you see here. It's always down. What direction is gravity all the time? Straight down. And in fact, we already know how big that vector is. It's 9.8 meters per second squared, okay? So it's 9.8 meters per second squared, and it never changes. It's just gravity all the time, right? Once it's in the air, it's under the influence of gravity, that's all. Okay. Now I'd like to point out that uh, there's a couple of terms that you might want to be aware of. Here I can put the target on the ground here where the projectile landed. Okay. And we notice, and let me get rid of this acceleration vector. We notice that this projectile has gone about 285 meters. Okay. Let, let it go. So it's gone, or sorry, 28.5 meters. Okay. According to this, so 28.5 meters. So at a launch velocity of 60 degrees and 18 meters per second, we got a range of 28.5 meters. Now the word range means how far along the ground it traveled before it hit the ground. Okay, that's called range. Okay, so just so you know what that means. The height of the projectile, of course, is how high it is at any given point in time. Right now it's on the ground, so it has a height of zero. Okay, and, and that's basically it. There's this sort of picture sort of says it all. By the way, an optimal launch angle is 45. So if you want to see what that looks like here, I'll launch it at 45 degrees. Okay. And it'll go, it should go farther this time. That's for optimum range. 45 degrees is the magic number. Assuming the projectile starts on the floor and you know it, it started from the ground, it lands on the ground at least. Okay, so that's it for this. Now let's go back to the notes. <clears throat> we may come back to this app at the end. But for now, let's just look at the notes. Okay, so uh, some key words for you to focus on here. What is a projectile, first of all? Okay, well, a projectile is simply an object that has been thrown or launched with no propulsion system of its own. Okay, so a, a basketball, right? But an airplane is not a projectile because it has a means of propulsion. Okay, so yeah, okay. So I uh, got distracted because the Zoom thing is acting a little strange. Let's see if I can fix that. I use Zoom to record these videos and there seems to be an issue. I have no mouse. Don't tell me I'm gonna have to start over. Okay, well, all right, you know what, we'll go with it like this. I might say uh, I am screen sharing here at the top, but I'm just going to go with it. <laughs> okay, so anyway, um, that's what a projectile is, okay? Now, a uh, hot air balloon and stuff like that is not a projectile, but water balloons, stuff that just, you know, you throw up in the air and they come back down like that. Now, believe it or not, the International Space Station is actually a projectile. In other words, it doesn't have engines out there. It's only under the influence of gravity. In fact, all satellites that orbit the Earth 
same, okay? They're simply under the influence of gravity. And in fact, if you give something the right velocity in projectile motion, so that the curve of its path matches the curve of the Earth, it will orbit the Earth. And as you can imagine, that would take a really high launch velocity to do that. Anyway, um, we're going to ignore air resistance. That's important. We don't do air resistance until second year university. And so many of you that you know, we definitely won't worry about it. We need calculus for that. So we're not going to do that. And air resistance means like things like a Frisbee or a glider okay, are not really projectiles either, thanks to air resistance. Even the piece of paper, the way it falls to the floor doesn't really work out, but the, but solid objects, fairly large, they work well this way. Like, so throwing a tennis ball around stuff like that behaves pretty much like a perfect projectile, as long as it's not going too fast so that air resistance doesn't provide too much of a problem. Okay, so here's the deal with projectile motion. The vertical component of their motion, they're just moving up and down under the influence of gravity, just like you would expect. You throw a ball straight up, it's just doing the same thing that it would do when you throw it at an angle. It's, it's still going up and down under the influence of gravity as it was before, okay? The thing is, is at the same time as that, it's also moving horizontally at a constant velocity, okay? Now, when you combine these two things together, you get the classic parabolic path. This shape makes a parabola, okay? When you throw something, it follows this parabolic path, okay? And that's it. Now, how do you solve projectile motion questions? Of course, that's the key. So step A or step one, whatever you want to call it, you make a table, this time with three headings, horizontal, vertical, and launch. Okay. And then what you do after that is you decide whether up or down is positive. I'll talk about how to do that when we do some examples. Now you fill in the list of variables with the information given in the question. Gravity is the acceleration due to gravity, right? Like A is the acceleration due to gravity, and you know that that's 9.8. So the not, question's not going to mention it. We know it. That's it, okay? And then what you use is the motion equations to solve the vertical. It's almost always equation three, because in most projectile questions, we don't care what V2 is. So just keep that in mind. This is... 99% of the time. You could use the other ones, but we just very often don't, okay? Now, finally, in the horizontal component, you just use this equation, okay? So there's two, remember, a velocity moves with two velocities at the same time, a vertical velocity and a horizontal velocity, and it's actually, we have to treat those separate and use different equations for each one. So we use this one for the vertical, component of the motion, and this one's going to be the horizontal, like it says in the notes. Okay, so that's it. Now, um, this is an example of the table you make at launch, okay, now, or sorry, when you're doing the projectile problem. Um, you often very, the very first step that you do, okay, is the launch of the projectile. And when you're launching something, like a projectile, Let's say this is your launch velocity V. Sometimes it's called the muzzle velocity of the projectile. Okay, if it's some kind of launcher. It has two components to it, a vertical part and a horizontal part. And let's say this angle was theta. I call this the launch triangle. This would be, as you know, V cos of theta. And that's Vx would equal V cos of theta. And this other side is opposite. So because we've been doing component method, method, this should make sense to you. This is V1Y equals V sine theta. Remember that VY changes because it's under the influence of gravity. But this is the initial condition when you first throw the ball and you first launch it. And so that's where these equations come from here. That, these are the launch conditions of the projectile. Now, in the vertical part, we have the following variables. We have delta dy, we have v1y. Now I use the letter y to represent the vertical component. So this is the y component and uh, horizontal will be the x component, okay? And most of the time you're gonna use this equation, delta dy equals v1yt and it's plus or minus 4.9t squared. 
because half of 9.8 is 4.9, and that's equation number three from your list of motion equations. Now here in this one, we're just gonna use Vx, or here, let me rearrange it. Very often it's delta dx, I'm sorry, fix that. Delta dx equals Vx times t. And so this is very often, well, this is the only equation really for the horizontal part. And this is 99% of the time we use that one there, okay? All right, so that is a summary of how you set up a projectile motion problem. Now let's take a look at some examples. So I, I did one, I've got a worksheet for you that I'll show you in a moment, but I've done an example here for you. Okay, let's read the example here together. It says a baseball player leads off the game and hits a long home run, okay? The ball leaves the bat at an angle of 30 degrees from the horizontal with a velocity of 40 meters per second. How far will it travel through the air? In other words, before hitting the ground, so what is the range of this projectile, okay? What is the range? So what you do is, because we know everything about the launch, and let me circle the launch information with a different color. We know, for example, that the launch angle is 30 degrees and we know the launch velocity is 40. Now we know something else. The batter hits the ball, the ball pretty low to the ground. So we're gonna ignore any vertical displacement. So we also know in this question that the vertical displacement of the ball, since it starts on the ground and lands on the ground is approximately zero, okay? Approximately, I say, because of course he's gonna hit it a little bit off the ground, but let's just say it's a foot off the ground. That won't make a huge difference, okay? Those few inches won't make a huge difference in the range if we were to include them. So we just ignore them in this case. So if you look at the steps, do the launch column first. So we go over here and first we do this, okay? So we set up, we don't wanna bother drawing this launch triangle. This is the launch triangle. We don't want to draw that. What's the point? Okay, we know we've already drawn it once. So we know, for example, that the launch velocity V is 40 meters per second, and it says the launch angle theta is 30 degrees, right? So we're going to take that information. Let me erase this line here. It's annoying a little bit. We're going to take this information, okay, and we're going to substitute it into the equations for launch. Okay, so Vx equals V, cos, I'm just gonna put 40 cos 30. Not gonna take out my calculator. Not gonna take out my calculator. Not yet. Okay, and 40 sine 30 for the launch, uh, the vertical part of the launch velocity. Now, second, second, what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the, uh, the vertical component of the motion. Okay, so like just to remind you what's going on, you know, you hit a ball, so here's the ground. You hit a ball and it does this. What they're asking us for is what is that number? How far does it go? But do you see why the delta dy is zero? Okay, it's because it's vertical. It started on the floor and landed on the floor. So it's vertical component of its motion is zero. And we're looking for the horizontal component of the motion. Okay, how far did it go? horizontally, okay? So second, we look at the vertical component. Delta dy is zero. Question doesn't say it, but we can infer that it is approximately zero. So I'll put a little dot, that means approximately. Uh, let, let's take out the calculator now and we'll do our V1y. So we got it from there. We know that A is negative 9.8, so I chose up as plus because the ball never really goes below its starting point. Time is what we're looking for because time links the two components together. The ball spends a certain amount of time in the air. Now V2Y is don't care. And remember, don't care means we use equation number three, okay, from our list of motion equations. So we go ahead and do it and we'll solve it for time. So now we substitute everything in. Because delta dy is zero, we don't have to use the quadratic formula. We can cancel the T you get 4.9 T is equal to 20, and therefore T is 4.08 seconds. So this ball is gonna be in the air for 4.08 seconds. Now we look at the horizontal part. 
We know that Vx is 40 cos 30, and we've got our time, right? So our time came from the horizontal, from the vertical component. And we substitute that time in to this equation along with the velocity here, those two things get stepped into that equation. And I get a range of 141 meters, 40 cos 30 times the time, 4.08. And that's it. Like you just have to, we've done questions kind of like this before, but we've only looked at the vertical component when we drop things or throw things. So now you see that like, you know, by using this method, we can solve this problem where the object's moving in two dimensions instead of straight up and down. And that's it. Now I'll, I'll like to give you one more example. So let's go back to our little game here. Okay, I'm gonna erase everything. So here's our little guy. Let's say, um, here, I'm gonna put, I'm gonna change these parameters. I'm gonna put the launch angle at 60 degrees and I'll put the initial speed at 20 meters per second. And I'm gonna ask you a question, where will it land? Okay, now by the way, it starts on the ground. Okay, look at that. That is so weird. Oh, I can actually elevate it off the ground. I didn't know I could do that. Okay, cool. Okay, all right. <laughs> wow, guys, I'm so impressed. Okay, so now I'm, I'm gonna elevate it seven meters off the ground. Okay, now I'm gonna put this thing, I'm actually gonna lower the launch velocity. Okay, 15 meters per second. How far away should I put my target? I can move my target around, but let's take, let's see if we can predict where this will go. Launch angle is 60. I think this would be too close probably, right? So like maybe somewhere over here, how far will this object go? Okay. Under these conditions, initial speed of 15 and a launch angle of 60 degrees, but it starts seven meters off the ground. We're going to factor that in. Okay. So let's go back to one note where we'll do this prediction. Let me show you how this works. Okay. So we're going to go horizontal, vertical, and launch. Now let's start with our launch conditions. I know my velocity is 15 meters per second. That's what I set it to. And theta is 60 degrees. Okay. So therefore, Vx equals 15 cos of 60, and V1y equals 15 sine of 60. No calculator, that's all I have to do, okay? Now vertically, you have to be careful. Are we going to define up or down as positive? See, this projectile actually goes down from its starting point seven meters, like it's gonna fly through the air, but it's gonna end up below where it started, okay? Seven meters below on the floor. So delta dy then, coming back to here, Delta dy would be seven meters down. And actually I'm, for that reason, I'm gonna make down positive. Now this is an important decision. I'm gonna highlight it. I made down positive. So that means this is positive seven meters, right? Now gravity A is 9.8 meters per second squared down also, so we'll leave that as a positive number. But here, V1Y then, if I'm gonna make down positive, see, it's initially launched upwards, like it's gonna go up before it comes down. So V1Y will be a positive, will be up. And if down is positive, then this has to be a, okay, let's scroll in here, this V1Y, has to be negative. I'm gonna put the little red thing there. If down is positive, this one is up, pardon me. It's actually upwards, okay? And that's why we had to make it negative, all right? So now I'm gonna write that here, V1Y equals negative 15 times the sine of 60. Now, at this point, you could take out a calculator Okay, and we're gonna get a decimal. So let me do it for you. 15 times 60 sine equals, I get negative 12.99. So I'm gonna write negative 12.99 here, okay? 
All right, so now we're almost there. I'm gonna now do the next step. Uh, in order to figure out the range of my projectile, I'll need the time, okay? So what I'm gonna do is write equation three, V2Y is still don't care, and it almost always is. So therefore, I'll write equation three, and equation three is gonna look like this, delta dy equals V1Y T, and it's going to be plus, um, here, I'll just write the equation out once, plus one half AT squared. So let's plug all the numbers in. We get negative seven, positive seven, pardon me, we made down positive. Positive seven equals negative 12.99 T, and then it's gonna be plus 4.9 T squared. Okay, so that's equation number three. We see that we get a, get a quadratic, right? So I'm gonna put this in standard form, zero equals 4.9 T squared minus 12.99 T minus seven. This is A, B, and C, the coefficients there. So now I'm gonna write that T equals negative B plus or minus B squared minus four AC all divided by two A. Okay, so long story short, let's plug the numbers in. Um, so 15 times 67. Okay, so let's do it. Okay, so I have my, my B value. I'll do the discriminant first, which is under the square root sign. So I'm gonna take 12.99 uh, square it. Okay, and then I'm gonna go plus four times 4.9 times seven. Okay, take the square root, I get 17.49. I need a positive answer. So it has to be 0.99, not minus that, but plus that. So it's gonna be 12.99 plus 17.49, so let me go plus MR equals, and then I divide by 9.8, divide by 9.8. I get 3.11 seconds. Okay, so it's 3.11 seconds. Uh, that is the amount of time. So now I go over to the horizontal part of the motion, and I say, okay, I have VX, let me zoom into that part, equals 15 times the cos of 60. That's actually equals 7.5. Just use your calculator. Okay, meters per second. And delta dx, and here's finally our answer, will equal, therefore, a vx times t, which is 7.5 times, and we got for our time way down here, 3.11 seconds, so it's times 3.11, so I'm gonna multiply that by 7.5 and I get 23.32, 23.3 meters approximately. And this, my friends, is our answer. That's how far the cannon ball should go. So if you look at how I did the problem, I started with my launch conditions, okay? Started there, actually let me get rid of that line. Let me draw a different line here. I started with my launch uh, condition. I figured out my initial launch horizontal and vertical velocity. Then I look at the vertical component of the motion only, used equation three and the quadratic formula and got 3.11 seconds for time. Then I go to the, finally I go to the horizontal component and I solve it for delta dx. So I just go vx times t. So vx was 15 times the cos of 60, times it by time and I end up with 23.3. Now, to, to see if I'm right, I go back to my app. I move this to 23.3. So there it is at 23.3. Let's see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna launch it. And if I've done my job right, it should land exactly on the target. And yay, look at that, perfect. Well, what did you expect, right? Of course, physics doesn't lie, so. We did it right and we got the right answer. All right, so now this brings us to the end of the lesson. So now I've shown you a couple of examples of how to do projectile motion. Um, 
Look, I can't stress it enough, guys. If you need to watch these examples over again, if you need to read the example that I gave you in the textbook, do it. Read the notes, okay? Get your head around this, okay? And then we'll have a quiz on this at the end of the week, okay, for both uh, cohorts. I did include an assignment for you here that has several practice questions. There's no questions in the textbook, okay? There's no questions in the textbook. The answers are posted right after the questions. Okay, so just go ahead and read those. Oh, by the way, a couple of things. Like if you read question one, it says a ball. I, let, let's go through some of this and see if we can set it up properly. Sometimes it doesn't tell you the launch angle. I just want to explain that. It says a ball rolls with a speed of two meters a second across a table that is one meter above the floor. All right, so this is delta dy. And this is actually the launch velocity v. Okay, but then it falls over the edge of the table and follows a parabolic path. How far from the table does it land? So let me draw a little picture here to see if you can make sense of this. Because some students will go like, what, they're not telling us anything. And I'm like, yes, actually they are, but you have to get what they're trying to say. So here's the floor. If you zoom in on this, I'm gonna draw a blue little blue marble here. What's happening is it's moving like this. And then once it falls over the edge of the table, it's gonna do that. That's what they're saying. And then land on the floor over here somewhere. Okay, so here's our floor. And what they're asking, once again, is if we just drop a line down here, how far is this? That is delta dx. That's what they're asking. They often ask for that question. Okay, and this is two meters per second. That's V. Okay, now what's the launch angle? It's zero. It's zero. So if you like the launch velocity is all horizontal. So when you're setting up your table in a question like that, you go horizontal, whoops, let me switch back to black. You do horizontal, vertical, okay, and then launch. So again, you start with the launch first. And what you'll realize is that V1Y is actually zero because it was a horizontal launch. It was thrown horizontally. I'm sorry for my writing, it's hard to write on this tablet. Okay, now VX is just two. It's all horizontal, right? That's what they're telling you in the question. So there's your launch, it's done. There's no theta value. And then what you do is you go ahead, I would make down positive because it never goes up. Okay, and then just go ahead and write the equations and then solve for delta dx here at the end. You're gonna solve this one for time and solve that one for delta dx and then that's your answer. Okay, so I wanted to point that out to you. Um, uh, you always ignore friction, but if it says fired horizontally, like these first few questions, it's all launched horizontally. See, this says forward velocity. All of these ones, it means V1Y equals zero. And whatever they tell you the launch velocity is, that's all VX, okay? This question too, it's the same thing, so I'll include that. Um, again, this one, he launches it horizontally. So here they're all saying V1Y is zero. Okay, and then, and then after that, I did this one for you already, number six. So we got the right answer, right? 141 meters. But anyway, I, uh, I did it in the uh, example on the worksheet, on the, sorry, on the notes sheet. But uh, yeah, that's it. All right, so, so you know, you're gonna need some help with some of these, but like, anyway, give it a shot, okay? And see how it goes. I think you'll be able to do it I'll have to show you in class and we'll do a little more practice, but we'll do that after, uh, you know, for some of you, it'll be tomorrow when I see you. Um, you know, we'll maybe review for the 2D quiz, take up any questions you have for tomorrow. And then, um, you know what, you can practice this stuff when you get a chance. And then what happens is on Wednesday, you write the quiz and then at the last half of the period, we'll start taking up these projectile motion questions, okay? All right, so that's it for now. I'm sorry I rambled a bit at the beginning. I was thrown off by the glitchy Zoom.
interface. I'm not even sure it's going to work for me now. Okay, so I'm going to stop this recording. Guys, have a good one. I'll talk to you soon.